Hello and welcome to another Basics of Stellaris video, where we're finally going to talk about making our own race. Since we now understand the unity in technology trees and what we're looking to find from them, we can start to construct a race that will be able to get the most from the path we'll take to our goal. Uh, first things first, let's click on New Game here. Bring up all the races here. Now these races that have the little bird at them are ones that I have made previously. Uh, but we'll get into this a little bit later. For now, we're going to click on Create New. And we'll have a look at just what is involved with creating an empire. So you want to go to Select here. And the first thing that you're going to come across is your species information. Now, a lot of this is what I would tend to skip at the start, unless I have a particular theme in mind. But you've got Appearance, so you can choose all sorts of different appearances for your people. Some of the... The groups here that you'll find, like for example, this one, I think this one, and this portrait here, these are DLCs. There are also plants that are a DLC as well, so you might not see all of these to begin with, but they are available to be picked up if you want. There's also an extensive modding scene where you can get additional appearances and uh, whatnot out of that as well. But yeah, this is purely cosmetic, apart from in the case of machines, where you need to have a machine if you're playing as a machine race. But, yes, you'll be picking just a picture out of here. Really doesn't matter that much from a mechanical perspective. Species name, you're just picking your name. You can write a story about your race and how wonderful they are, where they came from, etc, etc. The name list is much the same as well. The, these are what your ships are going to be called. And you can have a prefix here that will show up in the ship naming section here. So that prefix will sit on all ships. So if we take this out just now, put hello in, they would be called the hello, etc, etc. Now this is the first mechanical part here which is what the traits of your actual race are going to be. So, for example, you could make your people rapid breeders or maybe slow breeders, talented, quick learners, and the cost is here. Now, what this shows is you've got your trait points left. So you start only being able to have two points of traits. And it will show you how many trait picks you've got left. Trait picks would show that, for example, if I was to take slow breeder, that would give me an additional trait point, but reduce a trait pick. And we could end up crafting a race that is, for example, strong, slow breeders, quick learners, etc, etc, through these. Make them really ugly here. You get the idea. This is not something that I would focus on right at the start. Uh, I'll get into why that is in just a sec. Uh, from here as well, you can click on the little picture here. You can change your flag. Change the colour of it. You've got your secondary colours, primary colours, etc, etc. You can make something that looks wonderful to you. Yeah. Next, we have Homeworld. Now, this is the type of planet that your people will live on when they first start the game. And also what type of planets they are capable of inhabiting from those early stages as well. Now, there might not seem like an awful lot of difference between these dry worlds. You are going to be living on a desert from a, from a cosmetic point of view. They look different, but it also means that you could set up your race so that they could live on these worlds and then potentially with a bit of habitability bonuses from tech, you could get them to live on, for example, tropical worlds or maybe an ocean world. Part of the picking process is trying to work out the type of planets that you would be interested in trying to colonize. Now there is a difference between the, each of the different types. So for example, dry planets get bonuses to, now I believe it's physics output that they will tend to find on their planets more than the other types of tech. So your dry planets will have more energy credits produce on them generally and they will also have physics research. Your wet planets will have more food and will have more society research and your frozen 
uh, style planets are going to have more minerals and more and your frozen planets are going to have more minerals and engineering on them. You've also got the ability to choose your home world name here, your star name, etc, etc. And this one's interesting. This is starting solar system. Now you can choose different options here. You've either got random, where it will just give you a generally a balanced but a, a, an unknown quantity of planets and an unknown quantity of engineering research etc etc on it. Uh, if you click on soul system you're always going to get the same system to start with and you will also have some neighboring systems that will be the same. Now this what this means is that you're able to kind of streamline your start and you can make it a little bit easier on yourself because you know that you're always going to have Alpha Centauri next to you. And we know what Alpha Centauri will have on it. We we know that we're going to have the Earth system, the number of planets it's going to have, the amount of research, etc. that will be there. And it just makes it a little bit easier to plan out. It's much the same for the Deneb system. I haven't really used Deneb system, so I don't know exactly what's involved in this. But if you want to have a predetermined start to make the start easier for you, then that is always an option to go down that route. Next in our list is City Appearance. This is purely cosmetic. You can pick away here. Just changes the background and what is going to be there. And then moving on to Empire, you have got your options of your ethics. So you can pick up to three points worth. So you could have, for example, three of the inner tiers, or you could have one of the fanatics and then one of the other tiers. Bear in mind that if you're picking, for example, xenophobe, then you cannot pick xenophile because the, the ones that are opposite to each other, you cannot have together. So we can't have, for example, egalitarian and authoritarian at the same time. You'll see that when you try and pick that, one will disappear and the other one will be there. The other option that you have here is that you've also got your gestalt consciousness. So if you pick this, you will not be able to pick any of the others around the outside, but this will let you play as your hive mind or your machine intelligence. The machine intelligence is a DLC, so again, you might not have access to this to begin with if you've just picked up the core game. These play quite differently in the way that they work. You've got empire modifiers based off of population growth and resettlement cost. And they've got very different civics and they've got very different ways that they play because their people are not based upon happiness or anything like that. I would suggest playing as one of the standard ethics types, at least to begin with. But if you really want to try and go into Hive Mind, then by all means feel, uh, feel free. However, they do not have access to factions, which we mentioned on a previous video. Instead, what they get is they, as standard, have additional influence that they get at the beginning of the game and they just have to try and make do with that. There are civics in here that do affect that as well. We can find it here. It's subsumed will. You'll start with monthly, monthly influence and they will also, if we think back to the unity trees, some of the unity trees will change for hive mind as well so they can get additional unit, uh, influence out of that if they would like it. Right, moving on, we've got Voices. Again, this is purely a cosmetic thing. This can actually be changed partway through a game if you decide that you don't like it. Priority alert. This pre-recorded message is triggered in the event that your VR unit has suffered a critical degradation of its ethical constraints matrix. Yes. What is a single voice compared to a magnificent chorus? Our collective is an island of warmth and harmony in a sea of discord. You get cold and lonely in our speed to face the darkness of space alone. I really shouldn't have picked one of the longer ones. Yeah, you've got, as you can see, it's purely your advisor that is going to give you a shout every time a pop is, or a, a tile is cleared, a building is produced, uh, ships are completed, etc, etc. Oh, this is going to be shouting away the entire time, so... You can pick what you want from here. You could have it based upon government type so that it can change. It's really up to you. It's a cosmetic thing. Empire name. Again, this could be generated off of your species name, etc. So that's why you can't just randomly generate it just now. You'll, uh, you'll be able to pick whatever you want from here. Your flag. 
Yep, you've got your flag options. As I say, you can also click on this to bring up the flag details. Ship appearance is cosmetic as well. Ruler. Ruler is what your room looks like, the clothing on your ruler, hairstyles, etc. Depending on the type that you choose, that is going to change what they look like. Go nuts with it. Again, cosmetic. So, we understand the bits and pieces that are going on in here. And if we click off of this. We can pick whatever we want here. This is going to change the sort of civics that we are allowed. Depending upon the government type that we have. So, for example, egalitarians are not allowed to have slaves. So, if we go to slaver guilds, we're not allowed to pick this. Because you can see requirements are, with a big X is some degree of authoritarian. So... By playing as that, you're not allowed it. If we were to pick Democratic, it would also change some of the, the stuff that's available. For example, Beacon of Liberty. You need to be not a xenophobe, have to have Democratic and Egalitarian. So we could get increased monthly unity out of this if we wanted. If we switch to Oligarchic, then you can see that Aristocratic Elite is here. So Oligarchic or Imperial is lets us select this. These civics that you're looking to pick are the sort of thing that are going to help you towards your goal. So if we really wanted to work on unity a lot, for example, we could pick Beacon of Liberty. That would try and help us along our route. And with militarists, we would be able to get access to extra admiral level caps, for example, or maybe we want to have citizen service so that our strongholds and fortresses produce additional unity for us you know there's all sorts of choices we these would kind of synergize okay together not exactly perfect but it could work out if you really wanted to try that sort of thing you get the idea you can play around with these and try and figure out the best path that you would like to take to get through to a particular type of race so, let's look at one that I have made already here. Uh, let's have a look at the Mechanist Order. Now, the Mechanist Order, their goal was to turn themselves into a synthetic population. Kind of ideally, as quick as possible. So, if we have a look at this one, then we can see the kind of route that I went down to make this happen. So, they are a democratic race, which means that they can get... Uh, an election every 10 years that will select a new ruler. What that means is that they can constantly pick someone that is either going to give them the unity or the research bonuses or whoever's available to do what they need to do in that time. And this can be quite an expensive process on influence. So what I've taken along with that is Shadow Council. That means that the election influence cost is reduced dramatically, which means that it's a lot easier to be able to just pick the person that you want. It will cost a wee bit of influence based off of which one that you're actually trying to take but uh, it does mean that you've got more control over your race but they are going to constantly be popping up and uh, uh, and it could be a bit of a, an annoyance especially later on in the game now this race also starts with mechanist mechanist is another civic here that means that we start with robot population which means that we do not have to research robots we've already got it and it also means that you start with powered, I think it's powered exosuits they're called. It gives bonuses to army damage and mineral production. So we are effectively starting the game with two free techs at this point, and we've got robots as well. So it gives you quite a, a substantial boost near the beginning of the game and makes it much quicker to try and get towards synthetics as a result of it. These people are xenophobes, so they've got starbase influence costs reduction. And their claim influence cost is reduced as well. What that means is that we can spread out that little bit faster and try and take the land that we want around us to, to get a favourable start. Maybe get some planets that are very favourable to us. That sort of thing. We've got our fanatic materialists here. That gives us reductions to robot upkeep, which is extremely important later on because we're going to have a lot of robots with this race. And we've got bonuses to research speed as well which means that we can get to the text that we want that little bit quicker at the same time. Natural engineering, again, all your robot tech is based around engineering out, uh, 
engineering tech, so we're giving ourselves additional research boosts towards the engineering. And you've got Repugnant. Now, this was sort of a flavour choice, but it also kind of fits in with the, the race anyway. Because the race is xenophobe, they don't really want to interact with other people too much. So we've got Repugnant as well, just to kind of go down that route. We're not really going to have more people on our planets. We're going to actually purge off most pops that we find because our people are so good at what we want them to do anyway. So we'll try and clear them out that way. Uh, which, yeah, so... So the negatives to other species owner happiness is not really going to be an issue. The Rogar opinion impact does hurt a little bit. It does mean that spiritualists are going to really hate us. And if you do end up with a spiritualist fallen empire in your game, as I have found out with this race, they will really start to hate you, especially as you go further down the route of turning yourself into a robot and uh, having robots and researching all that technology. Sedentary. Uh, now, this is, a, this is a sort of meta choice that we do. I, I think everyone I've spoken to, really, does consider this to be the, the less problematic or the least problematic of all of the negatives that you can put onto a race. So what you're going to find with most of the races, if we look at what I've got set up over here, you're going to find most of them are going to have sedentary or some form of sedentary. And this is because... Migration speed is not really an issue a lot of the time. If your people are going to move, then that is fine. It's not really an it's not really a problem because they're still going to be working one tile and then not work and then working on the other tile afterwards. And resettlement cost you're not going to do an awful lot of resettlement. It costs energy, which is relatively easy to get in the later parts of the game anyway. So that's not really an issue. And uh, yeah, th as a result, you'll tend to find that most of my races have sedentary. Uh, it, it's effectively, it's not a free point, but it's a, a cheap point, which is not going to cost us too much and not really be much of an issue at all. Other bonuses that we have here is Thrifty. This gives us extra energy credit income. That's very handy with this race because they're going to produce a lot of robots. Robots cost energy to upkeep rather than food. So that is going to mean that we can have more and more robots. And when we eventually turn ourselves into robots well we'll lose this when we change into robots but you get the idea we're going to be able to have those robots built up that little bit quicker we've also taken unity output bonuses here and the main reason for that is that as a materialist you don't have an awful lot of ways of making unity so i'm just trying to make as much as possible in uh, in this case so that we can get to the synthetic change options as quick as possible. So let's go into the race now and have a look at what type of planet that we've picked up. Uh, Homeworld is here. We've chosen Frozen for this race because they are looking for engineering research and they're also looking to try and produce lots of minerals. Uh, minerals are used to build your robots and are very handy early on to expand uh, to exploit your territory, etc. So that can be a big help at the same time. So that's the mechanist order and what I was planning to do with them. Let's take a look at another race that I have here, which I've been playing recently quite a lot on stream. This is the Zoranthian Collective. They are a hive mind, which is, as I was saying earlier, one of the different types of government that you can have. This is a gestalt consciousness. So these pops are not affected by happiness and will not gain production bonuses off the back of that. They also don't have access to factions, but you can see that they've got their war exhaustion reduction, which means that they can stay in war for longer, so they're more likely to be able to get what they want out of a war. They've also got reduced piracy risk, means that pirates are less likely to appear around them. Monthly influence increase Bear in mind that they don't have those factions, so they aren't going to get the boost from that. And they've got additional core sector systems that they can have, so they can have more planets down early in the game without too much of an issue. As for the civics that I've got set up on them, we have monthly influence. And we've also got monthly unity gain as well. Uh, unity gain being quite important for this type of race, I feel, and we'll get to that in just a wee sec. So you've got hive mind, not affected by happiness. We've got slow learner on them. Again, it's one of the lesser negatives that you can have put on 
uh, the group that I play with feels mostly it can be your, your, your people will live long enough that it's not going to be too much of an issue for you. The other interesting thing about the, the hive mind is that their people will tend to be born or tend to be produced around the 11 to 15-ish range of age, which means that they can live that little bit longer. So they have longer to try and get their experience up on their characters and it can help out a little bit off the back of that. Uh, sedentary, of course, as I mentioned earlier, tends to sit on a lot of my races. Intelligent. Now, intelligent is something that I would try to take on pretty much every race that I try to make. You've noticed that they weren't, or, or you might have noticed that they weren't on the Mechanist Order. That's because they're getting their bonus research from the Fanatic Materialist and they've already got Natural Engineers as well. But I do think it's extremely important to have some sort of uh, research boost on your people. Otherwise, you're going to find that there is a very large drop-off in tech and you're probably going to end up behind pretty much every other race that does have that bonus. And tech is really quite important from a military perspective, from an expansion perspective. So I would always like to have that that boost to tech in some form or another. So be that intelligent or, for example, your boost to it from your fanatic materialist or maybe a civic that will give you something i don't know if there is a, i think there's only civics for robots that give bonuses like that mm. let's have a look up here uh there is a race here yeah logic logic engines will give you boost to that and you've also got i think there's a civic that can do it in here somewhere yes introspective there it is you get re, uh, bonuses to engineering research speed from robots off the back of that mm. anyway we're looking at these guys so, very strong, uh, which is going to give us bonuses to army damage and mineral production. And we've got Wasteful as well. Wasteful is, again, one of the lesser negatives. So, I would always look to try and take these. You might be wondering as well why I've taken so many negatives. It's because this race is going to be going down the genetic modification route. Now, that genetic modification means that we can actually remove these negative traits later on. Uh, and... If we go into the different traits here, the reason that I've taken very strong, even though it's quite expensive at the start, is because it costs three trait points for this. Now, the other option I could have taken, and I did this on a previous uh, construction of this race, is that I actually had Industrious to begin with. Now, Industrious will mean that you've got more minerals early on, but what we, uh, when I was discussing this with, uh, with people, it, I thought it would be quite a good idea to go down the very strong route because this costs additional trait points to put onto your races, especially through genetic modification. Three points is quite a lot later in the game. So I took this so that we can then put Industrious on that little bit easier and it means that you can get the bonus from very strong and from Industrious quicker in the game. Uh, if you've not had a lot of experience with genetic modification, you it might not make a lot of sense to you, but do have a look at it at some point. It's worth having uh, a little look into it and just how it would work. You can't change a positive trait in the early stages of genetic modification. So if we were to have this as strong, for example, then we wouldn't be able to change it to very strong until uh, until quite a few unity perks in assuming we get the right tech at the right time, then it could be relatively quick, but generally you're going to find it will be quite late in the game before you can get access to those things. Uh, so, yeah, it would take a long time to change strong into very strong. Uh, so taking this and then just taking it industrious later gives us overall a bigger boost to our mineral production. And this also does mean that we've got that army damage early on, which can be quite helpful. So that, that is a couple of ideas of races that you can play. You'll find that a lot of my races that I am going to play, I'll, I'll be putting these negatives on. But there's also a few flavour races that I've got set up as well here. So for example, the Thymoid Authority here, they are a flavour race. Now these are races that I'll put in and I'll 
let the AI have access to them. I mentioned earlier about these little birds here. What you could do is you can click on this. Uh, as standard, it will set at the Empire Spawning Allowed, which means that the AI can take this type of race and it can, along with these guys that are pre-made, it can take them and it can put them into your game. Now, if you click on it again, it will mean that this race is guaranteed to spawn in the game. So if you want to fight against a particular race that, you're, uh, that you've been playing around with, maybe because you want to test against them or because you want to see what the AI will do with them, then it can be worthwhile having this on. You can also click it again and guarantee that this race will not be picked by the AI and put into your game. So, for example, these guys, uh, I want to do a Let's Play with at one point, so I haven't wanted to have them in our game. These ones here, I'm still working on, so I don't really want to do much with them. And the Rooster Brewster Company, this was a race that I'd made up for uh, one of the people from the channel, Rooster who was looking to join the game late, so we set this race up so that he could join later in the game off the back of it. But yeah, you've got the idea that these are races that are flavour races. Now, these aren't ones that I would necessarily want to play as, but we'll be in the game and maybe we'll do something that could be quite annoying. For example, they could be quite aggressive or have a particular ethics type that people might find less desirable to be around. For example, the Taylor Empire is a barbaric despoiler, so it is going to try and raid people and steal their pops and turn them into slaves. That sort of thing. Then you've got the Thymoid Authority. They are repugnant, which could be problematic if people were to take over their population and not uh, displace them and clear them out. Uh, and they're resilient, so that makes it a little bit harder to take their people early on. Uh, then you've got stuff like the Aurochs. The Aurochs are a race that I was going to... I did play at one point, but I've drastically changed them since then, and I've not really played around with them uh, since. So I might play with these guys at one point, but they are quite an aggressive military race and could be quite dangerous for certain ethics if they sat next to them, because they might attack them early. I would suggest that you would it would be worth having a look at all of the different ethics, etc., if you're not entirely sure of what race you want to play as. And just really experiment. This game has a lot of freedom in the way that you want to, uh, in, in the way that you can make your races. So don't be afraid to just have a mess around, see what you can produce and, and see how it goes from there. If you've come to this video looking for specifics on types of race that you would like to produce, I would suggest that if you're looking to go down the Unity path, trying to produce unity in great numbers. It's very worthwhile looking at spiritualists. They get a lot of buildings that can give them bonuses to unity and they also have that natural unity bonus attached to them as well. Uh, if you're looking to go down a tech heavy route then materialists are an option for you. Just remember that going into the fanatic for each of these does mean that races that dislike this type are more much more likely to to get upset with you. Xenophiles will have bonuses to being in federations. Your xenophobes are going to get bonuses on expansion early. Egalitarians tend to get bonuses from having migration treaties, which will have people, brought, other races brought into their empire. So although you don't necessarily have complete control over what those races are going to have from a trait perspective, it could mean that you could be able to colonize various different planets and make, make the most of the systems that you've already colonized or possibly colonize additional ones in the future. Uh, so that can be really quite helpful. Xenophile also gets favorable benefits from that in regards to factions. Something else to take note of is that in regards to tech, militarists, if you pick them, will have a heavier weight put onto their weapon systems. So they're more likely to find new weapons, whereas your pacifists are more likely to have weapons pushed further down the tech tree. So you're not going to see as many of them, but you might see some other bonuses to, for example, statecraft or something like that. So it would be easier to find them, but your weapon systems are going to suffer in the process. 
So do bear that in mind at the same time. I hope this video has been useful to you. And as always, feel free to leave a like or a dislike. If you leave a dislike, please let me know what you didn't like about the video as it would be very helpful for me going forwards. If there's anything you'd like to see covered, then feel free to put that into the comments as well. I'll get to them as soon as I can. You can follow me on Twitch at combat underscore bunny, where I stream seven days a week at the moment. You can also jump onto the Discord. I'll leave the links there if you'd like to discuss anything to do with Stellaris or any of the other games that I cover. Or even if you just want to have a chat, you can feel free to do that there. And I'll see you next time. Take care for now. Bye-bye.